all four of us present friends uh, <clears throat> It's like no, no uh, after Michael Con. <laughs> so it's very very uh, difficult uh, with a person personality like uh, Michael when he is spoken. Then uh, what else is left? But friends, uh, we have uh, our <clears throat> friends there. I'll just uh, have them in. Just another one minute. <clears throat> Just putting them in the frame. So friends, uh, <clears throat> here we are. <clears throat> so <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, uh, here we are <clears throat> with uh, a beautiful panel uh, in front of you. Uh, all of them are like <clears throat> super specialist and uh, experts and masters in the field of neuro-linguistic program. Uh, friends uh, from this is like a global uh, leadership uh, leaders okay from United States and UK and obviously our two friends from India also and uh, so we will uh, today try and understand uh, how NLP can be used in communication and especially for financial advisors so uh, special uh, thanks to Mr. Sanjay Agarwal for actually initiating this whole process. And uh, then, uh, and yes, uh, Peter thank and you. Mikey, thank you for uh, your presence. And uh, Shantanu sir, thank you, thank you so much. So may I request all of you to just give a little brief introduction about yourself and in the first round and what you actually do. And then we will start with uh, some questions as far as uh, how mutual fund or how financial advisors can benefit with the learnings of NLP. So can we start with uh, Sanjay ji? <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I am starting uh, before these stalwarts. Uh, thank you. Uh, I am uh, Sanjay Agarwal from India. And uh, I am Gopka and a trainer and a growth accelerator coach. And I help entrepreneurs, especially financial advisors, accelerate their growth by working on their communications and belief systems. I will not take much time. Uh, we'll share more later. Thank you. Peter. Thank you. So uh, I'm Peter Freeth. I've been training NLP for about 20 years and my focus is on business. Um, so I, I help organizations to apply the, 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 the tools and the, the psychology of NLP, which is uh, um, better results in their business and, uh, and communication, leadership, these sorts of areas, uh, executive coaching, uh, written quite a few books, um, NLP and business, obviously is about NLP and business, how to sell coaching, um, pretty self-explanatory, so um, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much known as an as a expert in business application, business and professional applications of NLP rather than the, the, the therapeutic side, which is uh, obviously a big, uh, a big part of NLP as well. So great to see you all today. And there is some background sound coming from you. I don't think it's coming from me. Peter, there is some background sound. Yes. Yeah, we had a bit of an echo uh, for Sanjay and then also yeah, for Peter. Yeah. yeah. So think uh, till this get till we get the sound uh, you can unmute yourself again peter so that no yeah coming to mikey over to you sir 
Yeah, good morning. My name is uh, Mickey Feher and I'm living in New York. Um, and I've been in the last 30 years involved uh, also uh, in NLP, as well as uh, I'm a business owner and a serial entrepreneur. I've been training thousands of leaders around the world, corporations, um, but also, you know, independent solopreneurs. So I'm also kind of focusing on a business side of NLP as, as Peter. Um, I have written this, this book, um, it's hard to see, um, Generative Consulting, uh, which is basically the application of NLP. So tools for creativity, consciousness and collective transformation. So transformation is an interesting area, an interesting focus area for me. Nominal, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Shantanu Das Sharma. Uh, happy evening. Uh, I am uh, into this NLP uh, as a tool, as an application for personal excellence and business excellence for the last eight years. Um, I have created a concept named NLP Plus Lifestyle Practices. Uh, the idea is to bring uh, people from uh, uh, a living which is into condition patterning to a conscious patterning. Mostly I help CXOs and individuals who are uh, individually wanting to do something of their own. Uh, I'm there only for about eight years, uh, but that has been a very exciting journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, uh, panelists, for the beautiful introduction. Uh, so let's begin with the questions. I have a few questions, which is again relevant for our uh, financial advisors who are the major audience in this group and uh, this is a three-day conference which we are running and today it's the third day and this is the last session okay so uh, so we have around uh, 30 plus speakers and uh, and uh, and the seven pillars of leadership that is what we were talking about it was only about leadership 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 and leadership so when we talk about leadership the mindset is something which is very very important Okay, so my question to uh, P, uh, uh, Mickey is, uh, please tell us something about mindset and how is it important for leaders? <clears throat> you have to Thanks for the question. Yeah, I, I, I unmuted myself. Um, so what I actually wanted to do is, if, if you don't mind with your permission, I understand you're at the end of a conference and you, you have seen a tremendous amount of presentations. So instead of using my one minute to answer, uh, in, in this one minute, if I may actually ask you to do a little exercise. Um, so, so for a moment, all of you uh, who are sitting here, you know, just close your eyes, okay? And in whatever way it feels okay for you put yourself into your future so go up fly over your timeline and go three years ahead from now and just breathe for a moment and notice what it is like three years from now living all your purpose all your goals you're in the future and you have made it happen. You've made it happen what you wanted to create in this world, in your business, in your family, with your friends. You're living the dream. And breathe one more time. And then just notice the difference. Perhaps see your customers, see your coworkers, and just notice how they look at you, what's on their face, and breathe. And living the dream, notice how does that sound? What are maybe some sounds and feelings that you're beginning to get as you're really getting into this state of the future, of this amazing time when you have created, you've finally done everything you ever wanted to do and breathe and just notice. And then finally, just slowly open your eyes and come back into the room. 
And, you know, this was just a glimpse of time. But in between, perhaps you, you, you felt something, perhaps there was something that was a little different for a moment, certain feelings, certain images, certain visuals, and, you know, certain uh, kinesthetic feelings in your body that you're beginning to sense. Well, that's all part of the mindset. It's all part of our mental state. And our mental state determines how we succeed. So back to Kana. Absolutely, okay. absolutely correct. That was really amazing. Uh, whatever glimpses at uh, in such a short while we can see. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, again, when we, like what we were talking over here with Nikki was like, again, internal, this was internal. So coming uh, to a question to Mr. Shantanu Das Sarma. So should we think of uh, values Okay, when it is like an internal representation, what do you think? Like, you have to unmute yourself because we are thinking whatever way we want, we can think, we can go there. But should it be like value based or like whatever? It should be anything or everything. If you yeah. can just. Yeah, it's very interesting to note that values do not refer to external objects per se. So they arise instead of uh, how we mentally and emotionally value something in our lives. It could be uh, an attributing importance to it. It could be then responding to it as a meaningful and significant thing in our lives. So hence we can choose to recognize these as an internal evaluative of values, which plays a central role in building our personality as an internal representation for an individual. And it is very special from where the personality or the charisma uh, emanates from. Very important point. Values as an internal representation. Yes. Yes. Uh, so rightly said, when values are so important and we really need to continuously communicate with ourselves. So my next question to Peter is, how important is communicating? See, we'll have to visualize and again, we'll have to uh, internally and uh, can also consider the values. Now, again, in order to do that, we have to communicate. So uh, with self or with others, how to go about that? Uh, I think it's, it's an interesting <clears throat> question because it assumes that we can choose not to communicate. And we don't have that choice. And it was interesting watching the end of Michael uh, Michael's presentation where he was talking about the visual information about standing on the same side as the, the client and, and making, making the information, making the facts, the, the adversary in a way. Um, and if you think of all of the different ways that you could present information to a client, you are coloring, you're, you're putting your own interpretation, your own meaning, because you've, you've seen some data, let's say, you formed a judgment, a decision about that, you have an opinion about it, you can't stop that opinion from leaking out. And so without you even opening your mouth, a client might say, uh, I think you've got bad news for me or whatever it might be. Um, so I think we have to stop assuming that communication is something that we only do when we choose to. Um, and I think, right, I'm gonna carefully prepare and script what I'm gonna say, whether it's a presentation, a meeting, whatever it might be because whether you like it or not you are communicating all the time your every muscle in your body is hooked up to the output of your brain and is reflecting and portraying to the outside world that internal state that internal configuration or status of your mind so if you're worried you will communicate that if you're happy you will communicate that if you're pleased to see someone, you will communicate that, whether you like it or not. So I think the key thing here is not to think only about times when you want communication to lead to a, a certain result and, and you, you're going to plan that. You're going to think about what you're going to say, how you're going to say it. But think about what the intention is behind your ongoing, your constant communication. When you're writing an email, your true intentions will leak out in the email without you realizing it. And the person reading that email will pick up on that. So when you write an email, when you, when you think about how a meeting is going to go, don't just do it once, do it, plan it, take a break, 
come back and look at it again, read it as if you are the person receiving, because often when we think about good communication, we only think in terms of what I want to say. And actually, if you can put yourself in the other person's shoes and think, well, what do I want this other person? What do I want this client to hear? What do I need them to hear in order for, in order to make it easy for them to do what I need them to do? Rather than only thinking about what you want to tell people and what you want to express and what you want to get. So I think that's a that's a useful thing is just to remember we're we're always communicating. And therefore, the choice you have isn't whether to communicate or not. It's it's what you choose to communicate. So get your intentions straight first before you then engage with uh, with other people. So true. I think intention is so important. And uh, this brings me to the question to uh, Dr. Sanjay Agarwal. Uh, when the intention uh, of, let's say, financial advisors is again to communicate with their investors so that they can do it in the best way, how do you think NLP can actually help them? Uh, thank you, Kanakji, for asking this question. Uh, in fact, uh, if I say, if I summarize NLP, it's a huge topic. If I summarize NLP in two lines, so I can say NLP is the study of how we use the language of the mind to achieve our desired outcomes. And it is the study of excellence. It is the study of what works and what works well, especially for you. So a financial advisor has to understand first his mind as well as the mind of the other person with which, with whom he is dealing with. Right. Ab, now suppose your prospect does not know what are his needs and you understand you understand because you are more informed so you have to communicate him with him in a manner first you have to understand what are his needs and understanding the internal representation system of another person will help you to interact with them so it is very important and it is important to understand what works and what works well because if you understand what is working for you, you will fine tune and do it again. You will fine tune and do it again, time and again, time and again, time and again. And that is modeling, modeling self excellence patterns and modeling excellence patterns from others. So that is, uh, that is the benefit of NLP for financial advisors in short. Yeah, uh, my question to Mickey now uh, coming from this, because this is something which we'll have to do on a continuous basis is like uh, uh, I've, I've, I've read somewhere uh, you talking about map is not the territory. Uh, well, when it comes to financial advisors uh, and leadership, no, how are they connected? Do we think that like uh, we like I am in one part of India and uh, let's say another person, uh, David is another in, in Hyderabad or maybe Abraham is in uh, Kerala, I am in uh, other part of the country or like you are in somebody's in UK and US like it's only a territory wherein we should restrict ourselves or like as a leader we should become global what do you have to say on this thanks for the question um, yeah and so, so that's an interesting one map is not the territory uh, so that's one of the fundamental presuppositions or you know axioms behind NLP and it essentially relates to this idea that you know Peter said you cannot not communicate so that's one thing another thing is that your communication and your understanding of the world is based on your map and not on the actual reality the territory out there so we all just have a map of the territory I have my map you have your map your client has his map and the map is not the territory, even though we assume that we are very clear on what is that reality. So what does that mean to, to um, you know, someone who is in um, the business of influencing others? And you could be you know, a financial advisor influencing a client, or you could be a leader wanting to get a group of people to do something. It means that before you can get anybody to do anything, you need to discover their world, their map of the reality first. What's, what is, what's going on in their head? And you know, one of the reasons I actually wanted to do that mini exercise, even though it was just a glimpse, um, is because in order to discover you know, what is that map look like, 
it's often very useful as a practice to, you know, just sit down before you meet with someone and kind of close your eyes. First of all, visualize your outcome that you want to get to, but then also just allow yourself to sit there for a moment and, and, and notice what kind of little movie have you made up in your mind? Because most of us, you know, we already create the outcome in our head. We, we already talk to this person. We see him. We see his body gestures. Maybe he's a very dominant person and has a very, you know, strong voice. And we can hear it in our head. And we are already there, right? And, 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 and dreading the meeting, perhaps. And you can then stop and say, okay, so that's my map. That's my movie. Wait, breathe. Who am I? You know, what, what do I want to create in this meeting? What questions can I ask in this meeting? And, and sort of mentally prepare to be a more dynamic person who is discovering a map rather than imposing, superimposing a map on someone else, because this is where things go wrong. Uh, so uh, really insightful uh, talking about a map or talking about a territory and then no, which uh, Shantanuji was talking about values. So again, uh, putting your territory and the map and your mental state to what uh, mental state and values, if we can connect, rather uh, whatever we want to communicate, whatever we want to create a map, is it not dependent on the beliefs which we have? Mr. Shantanu, if you can just uh, add a few things, because whatever we are uh, creating or whatever roadmap or future or visualization, whatever we do, is it not all dependent on what we have like believed for so many years or it can just be created whatever we think? <clears throat> Sir, you need to uh, unmute. Uh, thank you for asking this question. It has a wider uh, connectivity with many things internally. As a financial advisor, when you are playing a role of an ethical influencer to a client, how do values would relate to another phenomenon which is beliefs here? How map is getting uh, you know uh, created because of the values and the beliefs? How these values and beliefs are important to your client? If as an advisor, I am in a position or you are in a position to influence that, what would be most pertinent here is to understand what are the connections between values and beliefs here. So let us understand this in a very, very simple way. So if we may group values and beliefs, we will group values and beliefs together because they both answer or provide a response to the same question. That is why. So assume you strike up a conversation with your client and he replies, I want to reduce my weight or I want to make more money and you wonder and you ask why? What is your motivation for wanting to reduce weight or why do you wish to increase your earning or make money? The response will be either a belief or a value. Please note this. So if someone says I want to make more money because I want to feel more successful. Yes, that's a value. Meaning success is important for that person or that individual. So you have cross-checked him by that question why on his belief and you got a value. Alternatively, if someone may say, I want to make more money because I want to feel secure. Ah, secure, that's a value for you again. It is not your identity, nor is it your mission. It is a value. We should be aware that our values are not who we are, nor are they our purpose, but they are what is essential to us. If you are wondering why that's significant, you will find a belief associated with it, with this value. The belief could be it's significant since it will assist me in meeting all my needs. That is the belief. This belief will result in having a value. Alternatively, this value will imply that belief. So you might think like this. Here is always a value and that value could be health, prosperity, connection, partnership, security, whatever, those are values and they are summed up in a single word, in one word. And if you start asking questions about those values on that value, like if you ask, how do you know that you are secure? You are going to get a belief as an answer. Well, security means to me is X, Y, Z. 
If you say, what will it do for you to feel secure? Well, security causes this XYZ situation. If you say, what makes you secure? You are going to get a belief again as the answer. So the beliefs are what connect the value to anything else. If I believe in my values, that will connect me to my beliefs. And these beliefs and values, if as a consultant or an ethical influencer, I am aware of, I can influence the person in a very ethical manner. So rightly, uh, so, so beautifully explained, uh, Shantanu sir. Uh, but again, uh, like it's believe. So coming uh, back to Peter uh, on this, uh, you're talking about belief. We know that uh, these beliefs again are created by whatever we do. And again, there is a belief which is created. And again, we do. And it is like, no, it's like a cycle. So is there a process? People say, no, with habits, you can change uh, things. So do we have uh, some skills? Can we learn something so that we can create or inculcate good habits or create good belief system or visualize better, communicate better? Do we have a pattern? Do we have a, uh, something so that no, we can in, uh, inculcate that skill? So can you comment on this? Yeah, um, the, the short answer is yes. And, and the good news is you already have it. But one of the things that, that happens throughout our life is, especially early in life, we are influenced very much by others, by our parents, brothers, sisters, friends, school, school teachers. And we just grow up thinking that the environment that we're in is normal. And it's only when we start to see how other people live or we start to experience other cultures that we realize actually there are more choices there, this isn't how i have to live this is how i have you know i don't have to be this way with my kids i don't have to do this kind of job i don't have to be tied into a corporate job for example um so we learn to to kind of go against the the beliefs that our parents have, have given to us uh, and that's not always easy um somebody asked a, a question in the chat box and said uh, uh, that he'd heard that every Olympian and, and successful people visualize their dreams and then make it happen. It's kind of true. Um, but uh, athletes, for example, will visualize, but they don't visualize the race. They don't visualize winning because that means they're trying to control other people and predict what other people are, are going to do. We can't do that. So it's no use predicting your clients giving you lots of money because you, you can't, you can't, control what these people are going to do uh, if anything visualize what you're going to do to get your message out to more clients now whether they listen to you or not that's their choice so there's a really simple four-step process um, and i used to have this as an audio cd product it was based on a workshop i ran for the chartered institute of management accountants in the uk so it's quite a, a similar sort of financial uh uh, sort of organization, you know, type of people. Um, it's called the ultimate success formula. And basically the way that it works is if we look at people who are very good at getting what they think about, achieving what they think about in the most efficient way. So that's the least time, the least energy. And what they get is, 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 cl is a close match to what they were looking for. There's four criteria. The first is that it has to be positive. So people will say, well, I don't want this. I don't want to be in this job for another year. I don't like this kind of lifestyle. I don't like where I'm living. I don't want to. That doesn't help. What we've got to focus on, on uh, your brain on and uh, is what exists, what is. And so that's positive. So what is happening? What it is you do want as opposed to what you do want or what you're trying to move away from. Second is under your control, as I said, about trying to imagine a lot of happy clients. You can't control how other people feel. Think about how you feel when other people try and tell you how to feel. You don't like it. So you're not going to tell other people how to feel. So what is under your control? And the simplest thing, simplest way of thinking about control is, is this. If you can touch it, you can control it. Anything else you are not in control of. Because even something that's across the room, if you ask somebody to, to, to give you a pen, you've got to ask them to do it. They've got a free choice. They're a human being just like you. So if you can touch it, you can control it. Anything else, you're working indirectly and you've got to take that into account. So is it under your control? Third is, is it real? As in, 
is it something you can represent through your concrete senses? Uh, Sanjay was talking about things like, uh, um, uh, no, it was uh, Shant Shantun, I think, was talking about uh, things like success and, and values and so on. And these are, these are great as, as guidelines, but the problem is you can't touch success. You can't see it, you can't taste it. it. It can't, you know, if I say to you, can you go to my office and get me my pen? You can say, ah, a pen, I reckon, I know this is a pen. I know this is not a pen. And so it's something that's available through your tangible concrete senses. This is how your brain navigates you through the world. Um, you know, to go to a shop and buy a certain thing, if you're traveling to a certain place, you know how to navigate, you see signposts, you see markers, you see things that let you know you're on the right track. Um, so it needs to be something, so it's thinking in terms of success or happiness, your brain doesn't know what that is. And so it doesn't know how to organize your behavior to get that. So something that's tangible, what you can see, what you can hear, what you can feel. And the, then the fourth step is that it's ecological. Is it, is it, does it keep you in balance? Not because you can do things that, for example, you can you can do something that makes you a lot of money, but you don't feel good about it. And what will happen is that will cause stress and then the stress will stop you from working. Um, and the balance will be restored. So you do things that are good for you, that are aligned with your values, that, that are good for your clients, that are good for everybody. Uh, and good doesn't mean in any sort of judgmental way. But, but balanced, it's, in, it's taking everyone's interests into account. It's, it's allowing people to have choice and so on. And the way you do the, uh, the ecology check, you check for the ecology, is you imagine actually having it. You imagine whatever it is, holding it in your hand. And you pay attention to, do, do I actually get a good or at least a neutral feeling about this? Because your body is very good at telling you if you're making a decision that's wrong. And you know, if you look back through the course of your life, you know all the mistakes you've ever made in your life are times when you've ignored your intuition. Is that right? So you can imagine this tangible uh, uh, outcome this, th th that you have in mind. And just imagine if I was to hand you right now, here it is, I'm giving it to you right now, will you take it? And if the answer is yes, then you're good to go. But if the answer is, oh, um, I don't know, I'm not, well, maybe, and yeah, um, that's not yes. It's clear yes. And you know it when you feel it. So that's four steps. P-U-R-E, positive, under your control, real, ecological, spells pure. That's the, that's the simple formula for how you can set up, configure your brain really to, to notice opportunities for you to achieve your, uh, your outcomes and, and your dreams, I guess. Phenomenal. What a formula. My, my dear friends, please uh, make a note of this formula. You have to be positive. Then you have to have the control. Then you really need to make ensure that it is real. And then finally, the ecologic, the eco or the balance, which you really need to create this four step formula in order to create that value in order to uh, use this. This is the skill which you require and this is a skill which you continuously need to develop uh, with this skill, with following this formula. Coming to Sanjay ji, uh, how communication and how NLP can actually help in creating such formulas and in creating such skills and actually helping uh, our own development. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you, Kanak ji. And uh, first of all, um, I want to say something that is speaking after a person whose manual I used to read when I was learning NLP, practitioner manual, master practitioner manual and tra trainer's manual. Uh, Peter Fried, sir. So uh, speaking after him, uh, so what I have learned from him and uh, Shantanu, sir. So uh, I will say quickly seven major benefits of NLP. One is having goals orientation, well formed outcomes. There is a concept uh, which is even higher than goal, well formed outcomes. Second is Having that mindset to have control over your time utilization patterns. Third is enriched communication, instant rapport building. That is very important. And fourth is empowering and resourceful values and belief system. Fifth, I would say congruence among values, identity and purpose. Right. And sixth is enriching relationships in personal and professional lives. And seventh is, as Shantanu sir said in the beginning, moving from compulsive and reactive living 
to a conscious and responsive living. So these are some of the benefits from NLP, which not only financial advisor, every person can take benefit from. Thank you. So true. <clears throat> I think uh, it's early in the morning there in uh, New York right now, uh, Mickey, and same with uh, Michael Grinder at that uh, time. So it's like almost like five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> five, five thirty, if you are on the Eastern side and it is evening in India. So it's like almost 12 hours. Uh, uh, all the three messages which you have shared so far, uh, Mikey, it is about visualization. It is uh, <clears throat> about you know, how to create all those uh, maps. And But again, uh, we are into a business of managing clients. So we want to know what is in client's mind, okay? So that we can suggest something to the client which he actually needs. So understanding you know, his beliefs, his mindset, and then giving a solution to him. So how can we do in our business, this uh, whole thing? I think this is more up for our audience, if you can just share. Yeah, good question. And um, I guess the trick is that, you know, some of this, some of the things that we are talking about here are invisible. So... You know, if you, if you start thinking in terms of levels, um, there is a model called the neurological levels where, you know, on, 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 on the base level, you see the environment, you walk into the office of this client or you talk to the client and you see what's around him if there is no virtual background. So you see the environment, right? And then you see behaviors and behaviors are indications. And, you know, you, you can see... Um, Meta communication. You can you can you can hear how the voice changes even if you are on a virtual call. You can you can pick up a lot of those signals. And then you know there's the next level which has to do with um, skills. And you know may, maybe the person is uh, extremely well educated and well versed in uh, financial terms. Maybe, maybe not. And then we get to this next level, which is the values and beliefs. And you know, we've heard from uh, Santanu uh, a couple of questions as to how you could uncover uh, those levels. So, so that's a really good idea. Ask a lot of questions that relate to values. You know, why is that important to you? What does it give you? How would you know you have it? And you will discover more of the values and beliefs of this other person. Now, I do want to uh, say that there are two more levels and, and the next level above beliefs uh, and values is your identity. And that's where, you know, you, you really got to focus on yourself as a financial advisor and ask, who do you want to be as an advisor to your clients? What's your identity? What do you do for them? And what is your purpose with doing what you're doing? Where does that lead you? You know, what does it create for others potentially? And this is uh, important that all of these levels, they include each other, but they transcend each other. So even though purpose and identity is not something that you can touch on, 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 on the table, right? But they still have tremendous power. They drive people. They are the difference that makes the difference in terms of how people achieve extraordinary performance. So... So I, I, I encourage you to, to explore those levels. And by the way, I just wanted to share that we've created a tool that's called uh, the Mindset Maps tool. It's, um, it's available at mindset-maps.com. It's actually, you can try it for free. And it is a way for you to work through all the levels of your mindset, all these levels that I just mentioned to explore it a little bit because you know the road really starts with you and how you get out there to influence others. That's really uh, extraordinary. I'll request you to share that in the chat box also, uh, so that no people can just connect and uh, get that test done ASAP. Uh, from this, uh, uh, creating again a mindset, visualization, questions which you need to ask. Again, I come back to uh, uh, Shantanu, uh, sir. And uh, you talked about values, you talked about beliefs. Uh, client is also having some values and some beliefs. 
and my values may differ from client value and uh, because so the whole idea is to understand what client is what is the need of a client and that's the way i can share sometimes the both things can be different so what should we put uh, uh, on top is it value or is it the beliefs it's a very significant question kanak ji uh, that how do you uh, prioritize between values and beliefs as you would like to access the mindset of your client so let us look at this let us understand the truth the existential reality is values and belief are at the same level of learning and change mickey was talking about the neurological levels of change now at the neurological levels of change if you look at it now let us understand first how beliefs and values are at the same level just by giving an example both the ways supposedly you value success because you have a corresponding belief that making money will get you success they both are equally significant to your senses or the sense of the client client believes that consistent growth means recognition for him since he believes so he will, he will always value recognition so this recognition and consistent growth are equally significant to the sense of your client now while we are understanding that these are the same levels of learning and change in the neurological levels of change in 10 seconds or 15 seconds let us understand what is this different levels of neurological levels of change which begins with the environment environment is where and when that client is at that point of time when he is connecting to you so he is looking if he is looking at the roller system he is looking at opportunities if he is completely to himself then he is looking for or they getting into constraints and danger after the level of environment the next level of neurological levels of change would be behavior that is what if the client is in his own self he is into reactions if he is connected to the bigger system he is proactive that means into proaction the third level of neurological levels of change is capabilities how how the client to go in certain space or direction where you are already there as a client i mean uh, a consultant now that is when if he is in the self section but in his own section he is actually looking at his strategy for which he is depending on his intellectual and intelligence capabilities now if he is on to connected to the higher and a bigger system he is utilizing his emotional intelligence as an energy right now the next level is values and beliefs that is what is important to him why the why for the client now at every level where and when what how and why we have reached why as a consultant you have reached why into the mindset of the client where from the self perspective the client has to give permission to himself to understand and recognize why he is wanting to invest or why he would buy your proposal on the other side if he is connected to the bigger system and if he can connect and if you can make him connect to the bigger system then he would be motivated to find out that why at a larger perspective and the next neurological levels of change would be his identity as miki rightly said identity is who now if he is on his personal level he is actually looking at his role as a client you are looking at your role as a consultant and if he is connected or if he could be pushed to a larger systemic level then he is having a mission at this level of identity then it is much more easier for you to sell your product your belief and your proposal after identity comes his purpose in the purpose level if he is connected to his self and he is you know inclined to his self he is with his ego and his ambitions and he is looking for his survival he is looking for his self benefits beneficials and he is looking for his ambition and he is ambitious now if you can push him towards the larger system he gets into the uh, capability of ability or wanting to look at the efficacy of contribution and connection and awakening of himself into a larger perspective of actualization so this is how we are moving up, up one after the other at neurological levels of change and when we are convincing and giving him some proposal whichever level the client is thinking or is at based on his communication we may calibrate and understand we can always take him to the next level where he is completely given a fresh perspective 
of what he is or wanting to believe or look at. That means you are installing a fresh perspective, which is one plus at any neurological levels of change from where the client is coming. This one thing plus one attitude and approach can make you always win over and give him a different set of perspective, beliefs and opportunities to move ahead with you as a client, as you as a consultant. That is really insightful, but a lot of work really needs to be done in order to do that. And you really need to work hard. And uh, from this, I come back finally to Peter. Uh, all this is hard. Huh? People want something very, very easy. Okay. Quick solution. So do you have some personal therapy wherein I just get it and I am just done? Do you have something, some solution? Rather, NLP has some solution. <laughs> Every... Everything in life has a cost. Every choice you make is a compromise. You have one thing, you, you give up something else. And you can, and, and that cost comes in different ways. So, so you can have results that are fast, but usually they cost more money. So it's like marketing. You can go and buy a marketing list or you can pay somebody to do advertising who has an active database of prospects and and that will work and it will cost you cash. Or you can invest in building relationships and building your own social media, your own mailing list. It takes more time, but it doesn't cost you cash. It doesn't cost you money. And both are effective, both work. And generally in life, the faster you need something, the more expensive it is. So <laughs> yes, there are fast ways to change all of this. Um, I think in terms of uh, on an individual level, if, if anybody here today is, is wanting to make changes in your life, you're wanting to change your lifestyle, you're wanting to, to get more money to, to move to a different, uh, a different place, um, you, you can do it fast. Um, and there are lots of ways to make money very quickly. You can rob a bank. Or you could sell drugs. That's a really fast way to make money. <clears throat> Maybe those things are not in line with your, your ethics or your values. So you work hard for a living and you, you save money. And you know, that feels better to, to do it in an, in an honest way, but it takes more time. And this is always the choice that you have. And I think, um, I think if, we, if, you, if you think that you, you already have this capability to change in an instant, you can change anything in your life as fast as you can make a decision. The, what they don't tell you, the sort of people who are saying, you know, you can make this change really fast, our, our therapy or our coaching program, our method's really amazing, it's really fast. What they don't tell you is the, the, the hard part is you putting it into practice in your life. You can make a decision right now about how you're gonna live your life from this moment onwards. And that's it, you're done, that's all you have to do. But the problem is you've built a life and you've built a set of relationships around the person that you were yesterday, not the person who you'll be tomorrow. And it's very easy to, to, to allow that to pull you back into an old way of living and an old way of thinking. So once you've made a decision about things that you want to do differently in the future, you first you've got to realize the, the future is happening right now. The future doesn't exist. It's not out there in front of you. It's not a place that you can go to. It's only happening right now. So you make that decision about how you're going to live. That's not tomorrow or next week or when you get around to it or when you get the chance. That's right now. The second thing you've got to do is communicate that to all the people you work with and, 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 and your friends and so on. And all the people who treat you as the old you, not the new you. And ask them for their help. So say, you know, I'm going to make an effort to, to make these changes in my life or I'm going to improve my time management or I'm going to change this habit. Will you help me? For example, will you tell me when you see me slipping back into my old habits? And they will say yes, because why wouldn't they? There's no, you know, of course they'll help you. And the reason that, that a lot of people don't do that is because they're afraid that if I ask other people for help, if I tell other people that there's something wrong with me, other people will know my weakness. Well, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but the truth is everybody already knows. The reason they don't mention it is because they're too polite 
And they think if they pick on your faults, you'll point out their faults and they don't want you to do that. But the truth is you're not hiding anything from anybody. So when you say to your friends, for example, I'm not very organized around this part of my life and, and, I, and I'll ask you for, for your help. They're going to say, yeah, we know that. And yeah, of course we'll help you. What do you, what do you need? So make the decision now, ask for help and then change your environment. Like Mickey was saying about the neurological levels, the environment, change what you're seeing every day. Don't put up pictures of gurus. Don't put up pictures of, you know, of millionaires and say, oh, one day I'm going to be like that. Because the moment you do that, you're saying that isn't me. As soon as you put up a picture on your wall of, of some billionaire or whoever, and you say, right, that's going to be me in 10 years. What you're saying is that's not me now. And your brain doesn't know time. Your brain only knows, oh, not that guy. OK, I'll, I'll keep you as the guy you were last week then. So when you think about these sorts of uh, role models and, and if you have a vision board and you put pictures of you know, big houses and fast cars, it's counterproductive. It keeps you where you are. It doesn't help you change. It doesn't inspire you. It just reminds you every day that you're not there. And you will get there by making the decision now, asking for help and changing the story that you tell people. So you're probably telling people stories like, oh, well, you know, at the moment I have this job, but it's not really what I want to do. What I really want to do is run my own business or I want to do this. Nobody cares. Nobody's interested in what you used to do. Nobody's interested in what you don't want to do. People just want a simple answer. Well, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm an independent financial advisor. OK, great. That's it. Nobody cares. They, they, they just want a simple answer. So. Become conscious of the stories that you tell yourself about why you can't have the things that you want and change those stories into what are you doing to get those things? What are you doing to create that lifestyle that you want? Stop giving yourself excuses. Stop giving other people excuses because they don't want to hear them. They're not interested. You're not fooling anybody. They know the truth. And so the only thing that remains is for you to wake up to the truth live the life that you decide to live and get on with it. So true. And what a way to conclude the whole uh, session uh, with your words. I think that sums up everything. Uh, with this, friends, uh, we come up to the end of the session. We'll request all the gentlemen to share your website details and details on the chat box if possible. And so that no people can connect maybe on your social media platforms or maybe whatever the uh, connects you have. And uh, that's really nice. Uh, plus, I would like to inform that uh, Mr. Sanjay Agarwal is organizing uh, NLP conference okay, on 3rd, 4th and 5th December which is I think with 21 NLP uh, master uh, practitioners and uh, coaches and trainers who will be coming from all across the world. And I'm sure uh, uh, Peter and Mickey are also a part of the same conference. So if you all maybe know on our exhibition site, the details are given. If you would like to join, you can go visit uh, on our website, volatilitygame.com. And there, there is a section where you know, we have all these details uh, of not only uh, uh, Mr. Sanjay Agarwal's, but each and everything, each and every uh, sponsors, supporters, knowledge partners, each and every detail is there. Please go and have a look. I think that will really, really be nice. And in a little while, uh, we have already delayed. At 6 o'clock, we will be starting our musical event. Uh, so 6, I think our uh, uh, musicians, our play, our... Uh, uh, singers are already there in the show right now. We will just uh, maybe you know, delay it by five minutes so that you know, in the meantime, you all can just have a little break, uh, just have a little hand movement. And this is the end of our three-day conference. With this, we complete the uh, three days of like learning, uh, interacting, networking, and you know, uh, phenomenal learning with so many people on leadership. And uh, we will end it with uh, light music. Uh, wherein some of our MFD friends and some of our professional people will also be joining and singing some of the Bollywood uh, songs. So thank you very much, uh, Peter, Mikey, and Mickey, and uh, Shantanu, sir, and uh, Sanjay ji. Uh, it was an honor uh, for all of you to be there with us. Uh, we'll just have a little... Sorry.
<clears throat> so these are our, our speakers at this uh, conference. So thank you. Uh, from Financial Freedom Fraternity in association with Economic Times, which is one of the largest India's uh, publication house. Uh, we thank uh, uh, Mickey for your presence. Thank you so much. We also thank Peter for the time, for the contributions and for the ideas which you have shared with all of us. I'm sure that is going to be really, really helpful and useful for each one of us and our participants. Thank you, Peter. And thank you, Shantanu Das Sharmaji, your uh, insights on uh, value versus beliefs really, really will be, uh, we'll have to study a lot on that anyway, and we will take it forward. And uh, none other than Dr. Sanjay Kumar Agarwal, a very good friend uh, who has been a speaker at our conferences many times. So look forward to connect and learn from each one of you. So thank you very much, friends. We are just super excited with uh, the evening program, which is just about to start in the next few minutes. So look forward to uh, join all of you in the next few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks very much. Have a great rest of the program.